Hi everyone and welcome to this session for our Aussie Live Conference. I'm Anne Merchant from southeastern Victoria, it's actually southwestern Victoria, and it's my great pleasure to introduce today Deanne Houston. I met Deanne at a conference, I think it was two last year, and I was amazed at what Deanne was able to tell me about what she was able to do in her classroom. And today she's going to share that wonderful technology toolbox where you can also do some really innovative things in learning. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all our sponsors and supporters. You can see them on this slide because without them, we would not be able to run this conference. And I love this conference because it's in Australia, friendly, our time. So if you could just click on that arrow um, and select one of these little faces, you can drag it to where you actually live in the world. Now let me just check whether everyone has the tools to do that. So we'd love to know where you're from and Deanne especially. If you can't do that, just type in the chat where are you from. We'd also love to know what's your interest in education and learning and you can add that one into the chat. So we can see we've got a few from America, quite a few from Australia, and I'm not sure if someone's feet was from Antarctica. Anyway, Deanne, over to you. We're really looking forward to hearing more about what you can tell us about that wonderful technology toolbox. Thank you, Anne, and welcome, everybody. Thanks very much for coming along to this session or listening to it later. Um, and what a fantastic uh, conference that 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 this is, I, this is my first time presenting here, so I'm really excited to be part of this and really fascinated in how it all works. Well done to the organisers, it's a fantastic concept and it's great to hear that it's going so well. So I'm going to talk to you today about Technology Toolbox and some innovative resources for your classroom. I'd love it if you want to, it looks like there's only a few of us here online, so if, there are, if you do have questions or you do want to ask things along the way, I really do, I am really happy for that to happen, so you can just um, let me know in the chat box or pop your hand up and I will, I will pause and hopefully answer your questions. Right, let's get into it. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like you to share with me one example of an innovative way you're using ICT in your classroom. So I often find that presenting, I really like to try and walk away with a couple of new tools in my toolbox because I figure sharing is just one of the, the best things we can do as teachers. Um, I've got a huge lot of things to share with you so hopefully I can get a few to walk away with myself. So perhaps we could, um, you could either jump onto your mic if you're able or you could write into the, the chat box. And just let me know of one, and if you're not a teacher, I can just see um, Joe's not a teacher, then, then maybe just one way you're using ICT perhaps in, that, that you think that's um, innovative. So I'll go through, we've got Anne, just going through, we've got Anne, teacher of ICT year 7 to 12 in Southeast Australia. Carol uses GoTo meeting software with Firebirds Collective. I don't I've never even heard of about Firebirds Collective, so that's really that's something for me. I'm just gonna write that one down for later. Mobile apps on student devices and also on your phone gives immediate learning. For example, they chat um, this is Anne chatting with Chinese classrooms. WhatsApp with wow, Anne, that sounds fantastic. We need to talk. Megan's just started using Google Forms to be able to have students to record reflection journals. Fantastic tool and a good way of using that tool as well. Peggy doesn't have a classroom, retired elementary principal and university pre-service instructor. Excellent. Use ICT every day. 
in your role as host for classroom, live webinars. Yeah, that's what I'm getting really interested in. That's why this conference really fascinates me too. Maybe there'll be some new tools here that you might be able to pass on to your pre-service teachers, Peggy. Firebirds like the phoenix rising are speakers online. Hmm. Peggy uses Blackboard Collaborate. This is my first go at Blackboard Collaborate for a while. I haven't used it for a long time. So, oh yes, and Live Binders to share resources from all of your webinars. That's a really great tool. Like using webinars, Joe, and creating blogs and web pages. Yeah, Firebirds. There's my afternoon researching that, Carol. Oh, you'll be presenting that on Sunday. Excellent. All right. So there's some fantastic uh, ideas there. Thanks for sharing, everybody. And again, there'll probably be more chance to later on for us to be able to share and collaborate more ideas. So a little bit about me um, before we begin. I'm a leading teacher of e-learning at Phoenix P12 Community College, which is in Ballarat in Victoria in Australia. My passions are drama and technology. I'm a drama teacher. I've been teaching drama for about 13 or 14 years now. So it's probably only within the last six or seven years that I've really uh, sunk my teeth into technology and started experimenting with, with ways that you can really use it as a strong tool within my classroom. Uh, in tw uh, two, uh, 2014, I won an award from Drama Victoria, which was for innovative curriculum for VCE Drama and Theatre Studies, and that was because I've been teaching VCE Drama and Theatre Studies online, which that's not new. We've been teaching online as teachers, and, and certainly distance ed has been going for quite some time now. But teaching drama online is perhaps new, being that it's a practical subject. And um, to my knowledge, I think I'm the only drama te crazy drama teacher, perhaps, that is, that is doing this at the moment. As part of uh, the innovative work that I was doing, I, um, I became, I was endorsed as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Um, Thanks, Anne. <laughs> Innovative Educator Expert, which I believe Anne's also part of this this fantastic global network now. So Microsoft um, support innovative teachers and you need to apply to become part of this program. I think there was 35 last year from Australia and New Zealand and I think we've had perhaps another 30 or 40 join the ranks this year. So we're getting up to about 60, between 60 or 70 in Australia and New Zealand of Microsoft Innovative Educators. And essentially what that means is that we form a really big network of te amazing teachers and amazing people all over the, uh, the, the world really and, uh, and swap resources. Microsoft technology is fantastic as you know and they're making a really big push into education and uh, um, have, have some incredible PD that they offer, offer us. I'm lucky enough at the moment also to be off to uh, Budapest next week this time next week actually. Um, so uh, this year, each year Microsoft have a global conference where they bring 300 Microsoft Innovative Educators from all around the world to one location somewhere in the world and this year it's in Budapest. And uh, so four, four Microsoft Innovative Educators have been selected and I'm lucky enough to be one of them. So I'm super excited about going to Budapest next week and spending a week over there um, doing, doing some amazing things. I think that there's times where we have to, uh, we'll be put into teams with people from all over the world and working on innovative projects and coming up with great ideas. I, I, I can't even, um, I can't even begin to imagine how incredible it's going to be. So I'm really looking forward to bringing some exciting things back and um, continuing presenting at lots of different conferences and, and um, sharing the new things that I'm looking, so, looking forward to, um, to, do, to learning. I'm so excited to be going to Budapest. It just looks fantastic. I can't wait.
So I'm always looking for new and exciting ways to integrate technology, um, as are you probably, because that will be why you're here. Okay, ISTE, I will write that down, I just saw. Okay, so a couple of, of my learning experiences, I'll just quickly go through. So two of the things that I guess I've been doing that's innovative and I suppose that kind of caught Microsoft's eye, one of them was obviously my online virtual VCE drama and theatre studies classes and another one was Project Songlog which was a collaborative performance with a drama class in New Zealand. And, um, and we did a performance together. So I'm going to speak quickly about both of these because they, um, this, is, uh, this is what I've been up to over the last couple of years. So virtual VC drama, uh, video, I use video conferencing and a variety of other technologies to be able to offer the opportunity to some remote and regional uh, rural students, the opportunity to study VCE drama or VCE theatre studies depending on what I'm offering each year in 2013, 14, no, 14, 15, and again this year in 2016. So last year I had four, uh, three other schools with me, which were Lake Bolac, Mansfield, and Garoke Secondary Colleges. And you can see on the map here on my slide that that um, there was quite a bit of dis distance between us all. Um, here's me over here, and here's Lake Bolac, and here's Garoke and Mansfield all the way over here. You know, we, we covered over 700 kilometres between the, the, the uh, two points of the distant schools. I'm going to show you a very quick clip about what my classroom looks like because sometimes I find it's really, really hard to explain what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to just Bear with me while I pop this in. Play a clip for you. Right, I might have to pause there. It will look like we've lost the end of the clip there. But essentially, that can give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like in my classroom. Um, the students have been fantastic. We're, we're fantastic. And since uh, that was filmed, which was last year, obviously MS Link and Skype are pretty much now the same 
the same entity. Okay, so some of the challenges um, of teaching this way and teaching virtual VCE drama were obviously the technology failing. I just nicely uh, showed you that just then with my clip failing at the end there. The bonding and the group dynamics, I found that really interesting because it was very difficult at first for the students to be able to bond through the screen. In a drama classroom, as in any classroom, I guess it's really important for students to have a connection. When they're getting up and performing together, they need to sort of have a bit of a bond. So creating that bond through the screen at first I found very challenging. In my third year of teaching this way now, I've got a lot of tricks up my sleeve and different different techniques that I use to try and fasten that process up a little bit. I also would get the virtual students to travel to spend a full day with us at least once a term. I found that really beneficial and once that sort of um, ice had been broken I suppose in the flesh, the group dynamics and the bonding were, was really easy. In fact it was probably heightened by the use of technology to be able to create the relationships. I could be in contact with my students all the time I suppose through the Facebook group that we had through a lot of different um, mediums that we used to, to connect. But certainly establishing myself as a teacher with the virtual students was difficult. Uh, all of those things that we rely on as teachers where you can catch up with a student in the corridor after class or see them or catch them you know, having a great day or a bad day, all of that I sort of miss because I only get my screen time with the students. So I found that really interesting and quite challenging. Getting timetables to to match up between four different schools was just near impossible. But the schools that I worked with were fantastic and being all mostly, nearly all of them, there were small schools, they were really happy to compromise and really supportive of making sure that their students, they could do what they, whatever they needed to to ensure their students had the opportunities that they were seeking. Taking the time to create online re resources always does take a lot of time, but once they're created, they're created. And I think that, um, you know, it, the time that it might take to put a good clip together, it may take you a few hours, but when you start using it over the, over the course of the next few years, you suddenly start to feel that pressure, that pressure um, release from being able to not have to make those resources all the time. Okay, changing the way that I teach for the better certainly did. It made me really make sure that I could, I had to be innovative, I had to be prepared, um, I had to be on the ball, I had to be constantly ready with plan B, plan C, plan D and wherever we got up to. I think we got up to G one day. I'm just checking through the, the the chat, making sure I'm not missing anything in there. The limitations of teaching this way was obviously the distance, getting the students together. The poor Mansfield students often had to jump in a car at 6 a.m. to try and be in Ballarat by, by 10. Uh, and I spent a lot of time in the car in the school holidays, travelling to each school, to each area, working with the students to work on them, especially when it, they were working on their solo performances. Having the available resources, now every school is different as you all know, some of us are one to one, some of us are not one to one, some of us are, you know, have great polycom systems and I didn't have any at all, so I actually used my laptop, we didn't have polycom so I used my laptop to dial into a meeting room and all the other schools dialed in with polycom. Having group work was really interesting and students would often, I would, you would see things like a laptop on top of a trolley with wheels being wheeled around the classroom and a student Skyping in onto that laptop playing their part in a rehearsal which was pretty um, crazy when you stand back and think about it but it was, it was, it was something we were doing all the time. The students were really good at once I sort of set up a lot of different meeting rooms for them to be in, they would work away and I could pop in and out of each meeting room. They then started to make sure that they did their own collaborating outside of 
outside of the class, so they jump in. They, I believe one group used Skype and one group was using Google Hangouts, so they were really resourceful with being able to continue their rehearsals, even though they weren't face to face in the flesh, but continuing to rehearse out of school hours. The student ICT schools, well the rural schools I found had really strong ICT schools being that they were all one to one because they needed to access the internet. If anything, my students were the ones who didn't have the strong ICT school skills initially. So I did have to spend a bit of time at the start of the year upskilling my students to be able to cope with the online demand of of this because even though we think that our students should just know all this stuff because they're surrounded by technology, sometimes they just don't and depending on what is more important in your school's curriculum and, and the importance that's put on IT or not um, depends on what their ICT skills are and the time uh, which I spoke about before. Um, the benefits of doing a program like this, well it certainly made the world a smaller place and the, the, uh, the students you know, formed really great friendships and they still stay in touch with each other. One of the students from Garoke and one of my students from Ballarat are both uh, off to Deakin Uni, not doing the same course but both at Deakin Uni and they they both said, oh it's fantastic that we know already know a person that's going there and, and you know those kind of relationships and things like that, these students wouldn't have had that opportunity and it's great for my students to see and hear about what, ha what a rural school looks like. We're a very big school, we've got about um, a thousand secondary stu students and about uh, 250 primary students, so we've, we're quite a big school compared to Garoke which I think had less than 100 students in total. Being able to offer the opportunities to rural schools was fantastic, I, I, I really do believe that uh, that you know, just because of your location you shouldn't be held back. So I, once people said, oh there's people, who, students who want to study drama but they have no drama teacher, I just couldn't let that slide by my radar. My own personal growth, just with my own teaching and the, the way that I approach my teaching, the way I think about teaching and certainly the way that the, the um, that I use technology and getting to present and everything like that has just been phenomenal, my, my growth personally and professionally. I love to push the limits with technology, I love, I guess I'm that person who's rushing ahead and pushing all the buttons and trying to break things and seeing how things work and, uh, and my husband's the same, we're both a bit nerdy like that I suppose, so we have a lot of fun testing out different things, he teaches English at a different school, so, so he'll try something and I'll try something and, and uh, we both really like, yeah, I really love to push the limits and see how far I can, uh, I can get something to work. Innovative approaches to learning, well that's what keeps us alive as teachers I believe. We, we need to be innovative if we want them to be innovative. 21st century skills, we know we can't avoid it anymore, <laughs> nearly you know, a quarter of the way through the 21st century already so um, the demands for our understanding of technology are only going to increase and the possibilities of teaching like this really are endless. I, I, I was talking I was talking to my husband last night actually and, and just wondering about where this might end up and where this could possibly go with the virtual drama, um, what I might be able to do with it over the next few years. I'm excited. Okay, this is a quick clip I'll just grab. So this is this is a clip which shows my students, this was last year and my, the uh, virtual students had arrived and the, uh, my students were there. This is probably only the third or fourth time that they'd, that they'd met face to face and it was, it was over halfway through the year. I found I, the students had been there for two hours and I hadn't given them one instruction.
So the reason why why I wanted to show that clip, I suppose, was because, uh, yeah, I can post a link for the video, the video that I just played, I can do that. It's in a private playlist, so but there there is that link for you to watch. There you go. I've popped that link in. I'll just talk for a minute or so while while you have a quick watch of those. Re so really, that that clip was just to show the the collaborative power of technology, I suppose. Know that all of those students were from four different schools, that they'd only met face to face, you know, three or four times, but that they had formed such a bond and that they had developed, a, they were developing a production. That was the day that they were going to be performing their production together. Uh, so, so that day they were getting everything ready and like I said, they just all arrived and they hooked in, everyone knew their jobs and I didn't really need to do anything because they'd organised themselves. I thought it was pretty exciting to just sit back and watch that level of collaboration that was instigated by, by video conferencing and online collaborating in the, at, at the beginning. I, it makes me really excited and I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just... <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but it's um, it was a pretty exciting, pretty exciting day. So moving on to Project Songalog. Project Songalog, because I know I'm going to be running out of time again. Project Songalog is was a micro production between my some students at my school and uh, some students in a drama class over in New Zealand. So the project was conceived by Bridget Crooks, who is a the drama teacher over at Kerry Kerry High School in New Zealand. She's part of the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program also and we haven't met face to face ever before. She just contacted me one day, saw my name pop up somewhere and went, oh, there's a drama teacher, I'm a drama teacher too. I wonder what we could do that to do together. And she came up with this concept that we would put a performance on. So her students had a a performance task that they had to do where they had to be the directors and or, and designers and everything and they approached my students to become the actors or part of the cast. So what we did is we took some iconic Australian songs and they took iconic New Zealand songs and we turn them into monologue performances. So I had students performing Land Down Under as a monologue, so just speaking the words in a very, very dramatic and meaningful way. And it was a real hoot and quite moving. Some of the performances were quite incredible. We had to get up pretty early some days to be able to do our rehearsals and we pulled this together probably only over about six weeks with the students. Bridget and I uh, collaborated online with Skype and using OneNote to kind of get the, 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 the structure of how the project would work. Uh, and the students pretty much, we, once we kind of got them all working together, we, <laughs> yes, there was some controversy, controversy with Crowded House, um, indeed, I think, I think they took it in the end. I think they got Crowded House, but anyway. We had a, one joint song, a Goitier song, because I think he's Australian and New Zealand perhaps or something, so, so that, was a, that was a fun one too. What we, this, once the students had started rehearsing, we stepped back and we, we let the project develop with them. So the, the New Zealand students directed my students through the screen and it was just phenomenal. We performed simultaneously uh, in Australia and New Zealand, so there was only a two hour time difference, so it wasn't too bad performance wise just for the early morning rehearsals, it was a bit tough on us, but we coped. And, um, yeah, so we performed our performance. So in our in Australia, it looks like we had one student performing, an Australian student performing their monologue, and then through the screen, one of the New, New Zealand students performed theirs, and Australia performed theirs, and we flipped backwards and forwards. We did have to use a bit of vid pre-recorded video because uh, you know, the, over in Kerry Kerry, it's quite remote up the top north end of New Zealand and their connectivity wasn't super awesome. So we did have some backup video there, but it was a fantastic project and one that I'm really looking forward to having another play with and, and maybe after Budapest I'll have met a whole heap of other drama teachers and we might be able to um, do something 
worldwide. That could be incredible. So it was a really um, powerful collaboration. And again, the possibilities of entrance, I've pretty much talked about that. Technology toolbox, I'll get into the good stuff. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, a couple of different tools that you might be able to use. Even if you're not a teacher, some of these tools are really cool. And you probably could do some pretty fun stuff um, you know, to be able to use in your own online presence. So 21st century learning design for the teachers is, is research based, it's, it fits into Australian curriculum really well. It's something that the Department of Education have, have been involved in the development of with Microsoft also. Really what it is, is it, I guess you could kind of call it a framework that you can layer over the top of your own curriculum and it helps you to identify how many and what level of 21st century skills and learning styles that you're actually using in your current levels. There's a whole heap of templates and there's online training and things you can do with it. It's, it's, it's not super dense but it's certainly once you get your head around it, I find it a really powerful way to be able to develop some, some lessons. So it's, it's broken into dimensions of collaboration, knowledge construction, self-regulation, real world problem solving and innovation, use of ICT for learning and skill communication. And those are the six areas and dimensions that you that you evaluate within your current lessons and see whether you're using ICT in a, in a deep and meaningful way. Could have used it in TAFEs. Yeah, definitely, Carol. It's a, it's a, really, it's a really great framework. It really is. And, and one I think that we're going to find uh, educators are going to be becoming more and more aware of. I know certainly a lot of the MIEs are, are delivering this kind of PD within their schools and I know the department uh, were talking about offering, the digital learning branch were talking about offering a lot of PD around it. So, so there's some links in there. If you want them, I will pop them into into the thing. I can't pop them from here, but I'll pop them into into the chat bar in a sec. The next area I'm going to talk about is productivity. So, so this is this is a productivity tool, and it's OneNote. Can you put your hand up or raise your hand, perhaps, if you've used OneNote before? Good. Okay, so a few people. So essentially OneNote is an electronic notebook. It's it's uh, developed of Microsoft. I should say actually at this point, I probably should have said this at the start, I don't get paid to sell Microsoft uh, software or anything like that at all. Um, I do mention Microsoft stuff a lot because it's really good and I use it a lot and in the education system we use it a lot. Uh, but certainly I have my iPhone sitting here next to my laptop and I, I, um, I, I have an iPad in the lounge room and lots of other, lots of other different devices. I'm not, I'm not um, completely Microsoft biased, but they have some fantastic tools. OneNote is very similar to Evernote and certainly I started with Evernote and then switched across to OneNote and they have very, very similar capabilities. So it's like a canvas, you can have electronic notebooks, chapters and pages, you can collaborate, you can have many people working on uh, could it replace your need for Google Docs and Dropbox? I'd say, I'd say yes. I still use Google Docs for a lot of things, but you can pretty much paste anything into OneNote. Um, yeah, I agree, Ness. It does depend on your purpose because I still have a lot of a lot of stuff in 
in my Google Docs that I use. But, but certainly what I'm really excited about the development of OneNote recently is the student notebook creator and the staff notebook creators where you can create notebooks that are collaborative amongst a group of people or a group of students and you can have sections of it that are just seen between you and the student bits that you all work on together and bits that are where the students can just access files and not edit them. It's a really incredible tool. I could probably do an hour just on that. But I will can I will press on because I think we've um yeah, one note um notebook creator is fantastic. So that's certainly something and they have it there's a staff one and a student one and they continue to develop. So definitely worth checking it out. Moving into student engagement, so a lot of tools obviously as a teacher and using IT, you want to, you know, the, we want to use a hook, we want to get our students excited about learning and ICT can certainly enhance that. So this is Powtoon and Powtoon is, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like putting together a PowerPoint I suppose is how you could explain it. I'll show a quick clip, I'll paste it in the, in here as well. Um, so Powtoon, you just pull it together like PowerPoint and it creates an animation. I won't show you the whole thing, I will just, I might not even show you anything at the moment. It's taking a little moment to load up. Here's the link into the bar. It's certainly good to be able to streamline a whole heap of information for exactly what you need it to be for your students. I'll just pause it there because it doesn't really, you don't really, probably don't really need to learn about um, VCA drama terminology, but it's, uh, there is a free version. It does have some limited features. A yearly subscription, last time I subscribed, was $31, which I thought was fantastic because it just enabled you to have a whole heap of different templates. You can upload your templates to YouTube or you can download them as MP4s. It's really, really intuitive to use and the tutorials are excellent. Yeah, you could create a PowToon. It's really it's a fantastic tool. I have had huge amounts of fun creating things in Powtoon and the kids really love them as well. Um, you can also create student accounts and get your students to use it as a tool as well. Fantastic tool. Quizlet. Quizlet is, if you don't already know, an interactive flashcard tool which can help teach terminology. There's a free version which is really very, very good and again a yearly subscription only cost, last time I checked, about $32. Um, the subscription allows you to be able to track your students' progress. That's pretty much all you get. That's a bit extra. Students absolutely love it and I find that it's a really great way to introduce gamification which, which is really engaging for your students. I will quickly, this one was a bit tricky earlier, but let's see how we go. Now I'm just going to push those techno technology boundaries once more. So this is my, I hope you'll let me do it, yep. And it is, this is my account and you can see, what you can do is you can create a whole heap of decks of um, terms and definitions and then you can set your students to to work through them. So they have six different modes. So the student student can see it as a flashcard. It will look like this. At any moment it will look like this. Oh, Diane, sorry to interrupt, but 
Well, yes, you have to log, log in up, to do a web tour. Yep. So you'd have to share your screen to show us this, not web tour. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. I might push on. Um, no, for this no one. worries. Yeah. Thank you for that. I didn't realise that. We'll pop back. Essentially, it, 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 it creates a whole heap of flashcards. It's worth checking out. Again, just jump on. You can. There's thousands or millions of pre-created flashcards. Once you, so you might be able to go in and Google whatever it is that you're studying or teaching, and then you can um, go through and find a, a deck. You can modify them to suit your own needs. And there's a whole heap of different ways that the students can interact with the deck. And you can, if you're using your account, if you've got an account, you can track your students' progress. So I can jump in at any point this weekend and see if my guys have been doing their homework and using their Quizlet, which of course they all will be doing. <laughs> Nearpod's another fantastic tool, especially if you're an iPad school, although it works really well on, on computers as well. Nearpod, you can create your own presentations and it enables you to take control over your students' devices. So you can have a whole classroom and whatever is on their device is controlled by you. So they can't, students can't race ahead to the next slide. They can't skip through the, the quiz unless you direct it to. It's really, really great. And, and again, it's pretty much no harder than putting together a PowerPoint in a lot of ways very intuitive to, to use. There is a free version that's perfectly acceptable. They do try to get you to, to pay lots of money, but I have, I've resisted paying money for Nearpod so far. So um, it might, um, oh, that's another good tool down there, quiz, quizzes. I haven't heard of that. I'll be checking that one out, Peggy, thanks. So that's Nearpod. Pinterest, which will probably has gone through everybody's radar at some point, is free, creates your digital pin boards, and you can write comments beneath each of the images. Students can then comment on the images. Uh, you can use it in lots of different ways within your classroom to be able to direct them to a Pinterest board. You might need to check. I know it was blocked at my school. We needed to get it unlocked. So some schools might have, yeah, may, you know, it depends on on what they're doing. Ah, oh, yes, Kahoot. Ah, oh, that's an awesome one. I have been playing with that recently. It is really good and in probably, yeah, really trumps all of those kind of quiz things. Kahoot is a fantastic, um, fantastic tool. If anybody hasn't tried it, I would highly recommend you get onto that. I got my students making their own Kahoots as well to consolidate a topic as well, which was really good, really interesting. Facebook, we know about Facebook and we I've got a private closed book which is which is moderated by one a principal class teacher at our school, so it's all all kosher. You don't have to be friends with your students on Facebook to have a private closed group for them to enter. So all of those kind of issues about being friends with kids on Facebook don't exist. You can use Facebook without doing that. It's a really I found for some of the kids it was the best way to remind them about things like their homework, uh, you know, the ones who are on Facebook all the time, you can get a quick message to them. The thing with Facebook is I'm finding not every kid has an account these days and, and so I certainly don't rely on it to be my main source of how I get information out to my students. ThingLink is an is a, a interactive media platform which is really interesting and what you can do is you can, you can sort of in, embed a whole heap of content into a into an image. So you can see on here all of those little circles, uh, little circles that, that pop around. What happens with ThingLink is that you, you um, click on those and a little bubble will pop up down here and I can, you can embed a video in there or you can, can embed, embed another image or some more text or lots of things like that. Really good, you can use, uh, the free version is okay for small pictures and to be able to access a full screen image it's only $35 a year so uh, they have a lot of thing links like Pinterest and Kahoot's and, and Quizlet and all sorts of things is that you can have uh, full uh, access to a whole heap that are online that you can just use yourself. 
another great tool. Vokey, I don't know how brave I am to see if my Vokey is going to work. We'll see, we'll see. So Vokey, if you haven't, but most people may have probably heard about it, um, Vokey enables you to create online uh, animated avatars which are really engaging for, for your students. Yeah, it is going to load. I'll pop it in the chat bar as well. So this is what it looks like. And Diane, if you can do that and talk at the same time, Peggy has a question for you or a comment. Sure. Sure, Peggy. One of your favourite thing links, the ultimate word wall. Right. What is that? Um, it sounds really, really interesting. I'm just having a quick look at it right now. Um, oh, I have to log in, so I'm not going to waste time. Waste your time doing that. I'll have to have a little look at that. But that's a great idea. I, I'm, I'm presuming that your that you know links into um, yeah for language and, and literacy and things like that, which is really cool. Thanks, Peggy. Oh, I've got so many new tools for my toolbox. I'm excited. Couple more, couple more for you. Um, flipped and blended learning. So there's a lot of tools for that. Google Drive. We had a chat about that before, and you could, um, you can, you know, we, you've got 15 gigs free storage. It's easy to use. I have all my students have a have a, I have a folder for each one of my students, and that's how I collect most of their work is through Google Drive because not every school is using OneNote so I found that this one, Google Drive, they can access. It's, um, it's really, really great tool. In fact, there's a lot of things around Google at the moment like Google Classroom. I know that, that um, my, at my husband's school he uses Google Classroom and that is a real powerful platform to be able to use as well. So for those kind of Google schools then that uh, looking at, at Google Classroom, there's some fantastic things that you can be doing with that. Weebly, I, I used uh, Weebly as my main website, so I created a website for my students to be able to look at and that was where I posted my weekly work, where I posted all of my links, um, all of my all of my um, resources, everything that I could do and, and Weebly is a great tool. There's heaps of other ones out there. A lot of people you can use WordPress as well. Um, GoDaddy I think is another one. There's, there's you know, pick, pick what suits you, go with what suits you. Weebly is, I find, really, really easy to use and it looks really slick. I've got, I've got um, a, a website for each of my subjects now and it's really, really good. All right, being aware that we're running out of time, Office Mix. If you don't know about Office Mix, I'd say get onto it because it's free. It's a plugin for PowerPoint and what it does is it enables you to make PowerPoint presentations into videos. Really, really easy if you, and, and it picks up all of your, or you know, you can just put your, all the, the standard um, PowerPoints that you use as a teacher, you can just pop them into into your, um, you can just, sorry, in, what's the word I'm looking for? What the rage? Make them into a mix. It's not the word I was looking for, but <laughs> my brains must be stopping there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Here's a quick glimmer. I'll just give you a little 10 second glimmer of what a mix looks like. It also allows you to put your video up in the corner. Oh, 
I'll pause it there. I know I'm rushing through the end, but you can see if you've got a device with a stylus and you're able to write, you can ink on it. You can, you've got the, the, um, the capabilities to record yourself. You don't have to have your image. You can just have audio. You can also use a lot of uh, interactive quizzes. And at the end of it, it just works, um, works it down into a, a MP4 which you can either download or upload to YouTube or it can just you can just save it online in the cloud and you can just have a URL. So you can just email your URL to your kids and then they can access your Office Mix. I've got stacks and stacks of Office Mixes. Uh, it's a really great way to describe a, a topic. You can screen capture with within the power, the capabilities of Office Mix as well. So if you haven't had checked out Office Mix, again, free plugin that you can just download into your PowerPoint um, program and does some incredible stuff. Uh, this is nearly at the end and this is Sway. So if you, again, if you haven't had a look at Sway, Sway is relatively new within, probably within the last 12 months. Again, it is a Microsoft tool, but I only talk about them because they're good. Uh, it creates, it looks like a web page or an interactive presentation and that looks something like this. So they, the limitations with Sway, you're pretty locked into these kind of templates. You can't do a lot with uh, beyond the templates, but I, I don't know, you don't really need to because it's got such really lovely features that you probably don't really need to do much. You can see you can embed videos in here, you can go straight, you can, you know, can um, create little pop-outs and things like that. Uh, yeah, so this is, so you can go this way or you can go horizontally, vertically or horizontally and it look, it just looks really slick. You can present from them, you can, uh, again, this just embeds down into a URL so that you could just send that, send that through to your students with a whole heap of interactive links and things, get your students to make sway. It's collaborative now, you can actually have a couple of students all working on the same sway together. It's kind of a bit of a cross between Pinterest and PowerPoint, I, I think, um, but a really, really strong tool. So yeah, really, really worth checking that out if you haven't had a play with sway. That's all for me and I know I'm running out of time. So. I've already kind of actually covered that at the beginning about what's in your toolbox and I can see that you've really been putting some great ideas in there. I'm going to be going through that chat bar very shortly to uh, get some of those great things um, from you and thanks very much for sharing your great ideas. So hopefully there's something fantastic and if you could just pop in one of the awesome things that you're going to take away from this workshop that we've just done, like one of the things that you're all going to go, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to go try this tool, I'm going to try that tool, that would be great. Yeah, mix. Yeah, really great for screencasting and you'll love it. Yep, yeah, it's a powerful tool, OneNote. Uh, Deanne, we may have one or two minutes for questions. Yeah, does anyone have a question and um, yes. we'll just see what yep. comes. Either put your hand up or click on the microphone. Yep. I'll just not, pop in there, Deanne, and uh, just say, how much I enjoyed your presentation and I wanted to sure. inspire you to reach out to do others and we mentioned ISTE and we mentioned the Global Education Conference. I think we need to put more mm -hmm. of what our Aussie innovators like yourself yep. are doing out there on the world stage. So we would like to see you in more of these presentations. Thanks again. <laughs> mm. 
That's all right. Thanks, Carol, and thanks everybody. Um, for and good luck with with your own journeys. I hope um, I hope you get to make some awesome new things with some of those tools. And and just to, yeah, thanks for sharing some great things for me to to try out as well. Um, yeah, definitely, Carol. Very happy to continue presenting. I enjoy it and. Uh, I really enjoyed this pro this process today. This has sort of um, yeah been really good. I think you guys have done a great job pulling this series and of Jan, presentations I will also together. Add my so thanks well done. To you. I think it's wonderful to see the practical applications that you've made for your classroom, your innovative use of technology, and especially in a subject like drama, which many would say is almost impossible. Uh, you know, to be able to use, do that virtually. So thank you once again. <laughs> and just a reminder to everyone, there are more sessions uh, following the presentation of Deanne's. And in fact, um, producing digital text for the Australian, sorry, Google Mapping with Kathy Beck is next. Producing digital text for the Australian curriculum in an hour's time and then we've got Joe Freitag presenting in two hours time. So please stay with us, join in more of the sessions and thanks again Deanne. No problem, thanks everybody and all the best. I'll probably see you in other meeting rooms later over the weekend as we're checking out different presenters. Thanks a lot everybody.